Finally tonight, CBS's Steve Hartman goes on the road to visit a Texas home that was once destroyed by hate, but rebuilt with love. Oh, shit. Here we go with the Juneteenth. White people, too. <laughs> Finally tonight, CBS's Steve Hartman goes on the road to visit a Texas home that was once destroyed by hate, but rebuilt with love. <laughs> At the age of 97, oh, good morning. just stepping hey. out of a 4 by 4 is a major accomplishment. Hey. But Opal Lee has taken much greater strides than this. <sighs> with no plans. Why you ain't helper, motherfucker? You... <laughs> You sitting there holding the goddamn camera. Put the camera on the tripod and go help her ass out, man. You piece of shit. See, back in my day, man, these this new generation of motherfuckers, that ain't they ain't shit. You wanted this 97-year-old lady struggle to get out the car like that, man. Stepping out of a four by four is a major accomplishment. But Opal Lee has taken much greater strides than this. <sighs> with no plans to sit anytime soon. Where do we go from here? We don't have to sit around and wait for the Lord to come for us. In fact, he's gonna have to catch me. <laughs> As we first reported a few months ago, Opal is a retired teacher and lifelong community activist in Fort Worth, Texas. She's mostly known for her successful campaign to make Juneteenth a national holiday. So she's a lifelong community activist. So, damn. So, she a hundred. So, she been doing this shit since the since the, the, the 20s, man, right? Or the 30s, probably, when she was an adult. The 40s, maybe. Let's just say the 40s. I wonder how many times she marched. That, hey, turn in them niggas that just killed them people at the fucking... Uh, Juneteenth festival, huh? If you know where they are, man, turn them in. Let's form a militia and go find them niggas. What if she ever did that? Full campaign to make Juneteenth a national holiday. But what is lesser known is how that fire in her belly came to be. Back in 1939, when Opal uh -oh. was 12, her family moved into a house that stood right here in an all-white neighborhood. They'd lived here just five days when a mob showed up. House smashed by crowd is watched. Police Tuesday were keeping watch over a house recently occupied by a Negro family. In the 900 block of East Annie Street, where a crowd of about 500 persons gathered Monday night, forcing the family to flee and then smashing windows and furniture in the home. Damn, man, why would these why would these white people not want a black family to move into their neighborhood, man? What reason would these people not want some blacks to move into their neighborhood, man? That's crazy, man. I don't get it. I don't get it. Blacks are blacks are great, man. We, whenever blacks move into a neighborhood, man, they make everything better, man. <laughs> they must didn't they must didn't love their neighborhood, man, because blacks make every neighborhood better. They don't know what they was missing, man. I feel sorry for them white people, man. They don't know what they missed, man. What a waste, man. In an all-white neighborhood. They'd lived here just five days when a mob showed up. What did the mob do to your house? They tore it asunder. They set stuff on fire. They did despicable things. The family moved away Wait a second. and moved on. 
Wait a second. They had a BLM back in the day. <laughs> BLM was BLM was around back in the 30s, man. I'll be damned, man. Ain't that a bitch? I didn't know BLM was was around back in them days, man. They did despicable things. The family moved away and moved on. They just wanted to forget the horror. Until eight decades later, when Opal Lee decided the time had come to remember it. So she looked up the address, found out the lot was still vacant and owned by the local chapter of Habitat for Humanity. Uh oh. CEO Gage Yeager. The local chapter Habitat for Humanity. <laughs> or better known as building free houses for niggas. No, building free houses for single moms, man. You get a house, you get a house, you get a house. What's happening, man? Yo, what's good, man? That was uh, B, uh, E, and M back in the day. What's that? Black Negroes matter. Yeah, man. Tearing up them people's houses like that, man. Well, this white folk gonna fix it. White folk, like, white folk, when they, I bet when this white dude heard that story, man, he they, probably they got, like, damn. They got that habitat of humanity shit all through the hood here, bro. Oh, and, yeah? In Chicago? Hell yeah. Them motherfucking houses are terrible. <laughs> them they shit. They just up. <laughs> Man, no motherfuckers are like volunteer work, and you can tell, bro. The motherfuckers look. The motherfuckers got like four windows, bro. <laughs> Damn. Yeah, but I mean, it is a house. They got nice garages, though. The garage is bigger than the house. Yeah, man, these niggas don't deserve no good house, man. They don't get, white folk don't be building these niggas no great house. Just get them throw some shit together, cause that's what they would do if they. Think about it. Hey, if niggas could, I ain't gonna flex though. This is exactly what you think. Some shit thrown together by some fucking gliders with fucking blue hair, and ain't got really no real uh goddamn experience with construction, bro. It'd be looking like the panels be falling off within the year. It'd be the motherfucking uh. You know where you can hit the main line for the fucking uh yeah. the drain and shit that be in the front yard. That shit was sticking up like four feet in the grass. I'm like, man, that's a hazard, bro. Yo, I put it like this, man. Get them niggas, them niggas, if they could make, if they had the wherewithal and the goddamn dignity to make their own houses, them shits would be shabby like that anyway. So they getting, you basically giving them what they would make. So it's all good, man. Yeah. So she looked up the address, found out the lot was still vacant and owned by the local chapter of Habitat for Humanity. CEO Gage Yeager took Opal's call. He listened to her story, but then told her she could not buy that property. Said, uh, well, we won't sell it to you, Opal, but we'll give it to you. There's no, no option for anything else. What'd you think when you heard that? Ah, when I get happy, I want to do a holy dance but the kids say i'm twerking so i don't ever do it lord have mercy man put that lady in the fucking old home man this bitch said i i don't i, I don't want to disrespect my elders bro. Yeah. Man, you can't call no 97 year old. Yeah, man. yeah. I I, 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 oh, apologize. I apologize. I apologize. I apologize, but man, you know, I, don't think, I don't think she understands what that means. Yeah, she might, you know what? Yeah, I'll give her that. I, I'll give her that. What she she 97, so she yeah, was yeah. I feel I feel bad. She was 70. Yeah, she was 70 in 1997. <laughs> Oh no, no, she don't know what that is. Okay, <laughs> hey, 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 all some people in the uh congregation, man, I apologize, man. Uh, woke liberals, please don't dox me, dog. Yeah, man, you ain't shit for that, man. It's safe, I'm twerking, so I don't ever do it. 
and she still hadn't heard the best news. Are you? Gage also offered to work with donors to put a house on her land for free. And today, he delivered. Three bedrooms, two baths, one happy homeowner. This is wonderful, wonderful. Long ago, a group of thugs robbed Opal's family of the American dream. Oh, no, that's racist. No, man. No, that shit racist, man. But that white man show is good to us. I'm telling you, man. That white I'm man, telling you. That white man is such, he's so nice and so giving. Look at him. And and, and I wonder what, what happened. Did those white people just show up there or did somebody? I up? guarantee. <laughs> I guarantee. From the like, from the fucking, from the his, like, okay, I I guarantee that somebody, her cousin, uncle, dad, granddad, whatever, <laughs> raped the white girl or some shit. They came over as an angry mob to come kill them. They didn't come out and they burned the house down. It was something like that, bro. Guarantee. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Definitely, man. Something happened. They ain't leaving a lot out, bro. What the fuck? Long ago, a group of thugs robbed Opal's family of the American dream. And 85 years later, another mob has restored it. Now, all Opal wants is time to enjoy the gift. I want you to know that I've got a God who has been so good to me. I think if I ask, he'd let me have a couple of more years. <laughs> a most worthy prayer. Steve Hartman, on the road in Fort Worth. Hey man, I ain't, I ain't mad at her, man. I ain't gonna nah, be nah, angry. Nah, nah, she don't, she don't know no better though. You know, this, maybe this. it's one that that tell us the truth. Hopefully, we can find the truth in this. I story. guarantee you ain't gonna be able to find that truth, bro. <laughs> <laughs> Scripture can help us make sense of the world. Well, their hearts plot violence. And Opal Lee has been in this world a while. And their lips talk of mischief. Proverbs twenty four. <laughs> Known as the grandmother of Juneteenth, the activist who walked her way to victory. It's over. You're incredible. In 2021, achieving her goal of making June 19th, Juneteenth, a national holiday. But it was on that date in 1939 when hate showed up on her doorstep. It was going to be the nicest place that we had had in Fort Worth. A new home on 940 East Annie Street for 12-year-old Opal and her family. And we were so proud of it, you know. They'd been there just four days when hatred and violence gathered on their front lawn in the form of a racist mob. We were frightened to death when our parents sent us away from the house and we didn't know what was going on. And then to come back later to see it. I got it. Uh... That was... They, uh, they were squatting. <laughs> oh, man. But her, 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 her people were squatting, man. They, they ain't pay shit, man. They had a fake lease, man. <laughs> God, no. I don't know how to say it. It was traumatic. Newspaper reports say a crowd of 500 forced them from the neighborhood before vandalizing their home and burning their belongings. I talked to Opal about it, and she said she doesn't remember too much from that night. And perhaps to her parents' credit, uh, they didn't talk about it. Gage Yeager, CEO of Trinity Habitat for <laughs> Humanity. And a friend mm. Hey, I, they ain't talk about it. I, this is some bullshit. I know it's <laughs> yeah, niggas, niggas going niggas down talking talking about about shit. It, dog. Niggas are saying it like, <laughs> hey, they'd be like, man, it's been, this is the two year anniversary of those fucking crackers burning our fucking house down. Yeah, exactly. Man, exactly. they said they ain't talking about it no more. That's because they found out that lease was fake, man. Yeah, no bullshit. They, they, that, that's a fishy. That's fishy right there. That is real fishy, man. <laughs> For these kids marching and these kids watching, 
Having Juneteenth on the calendar is all they've ever known. But for moms like Shay, Juneteenth has been recognized nationally for only four years of her life. The holiday means a lot to her and her great grandmother. She tells us stories of her growing up with her grandma, who actually was born into slavery and just like, you know, kind of. Her grandmother was born into slavery. So. That, no, she said that her grandma, grandma. Her grandma, grandma was born into slavery. I don't think that's true. She must have been a native. She must have been a slave of the Indians. <laughs> the Indians, they didn't abolish slavery to the yeah, night because because grandma, grandma. So this girl is sixteen. Her grandma, let's give her some. You know, what I'm saying whatever. Let's say she's sixty. That lady's mother was probably 80, 85. It still ain't enough. It's still that ain't, ain't enough time. time. That ain't enough time. No. The connection that it is there and it's very close to my family. That's why the Juneteenth Parade is an annual tradition. Thing, you don't even have to do all that. You could just enjoy Juneteenth. Like you don't need it. You don't need to have been born into slavery. You, you could just be like, hey, I'm celebrating Juneteenth because I feel like celebrating Juneteenth. But I think it's always all, got hey, I, in all actuality, like into like, you know what I'm saying. And trying to like not hate like niggas all together. I try to do something for Juneteenth, you know, just to because I, you know, I preach conservatism to my kids. You know, I say I preach like your color don't matter, content of character, mm -hmm. and all this other shit. But mm -hmm. you know, over by us, we have an Irish Day parade and all this other shit, and they they, they mm -hmm. do it real big, you know. So I do try to, you know, let them fucking like enjoy the holiday the holiday mm -hmm. and i ain't doing no woke mm -hmm. shit but i just feel like you know what you think yeah i mean listen man um i didn't even know that i don't know anybody who said anything to me about juneteenth today nobody in yeah i mean nobody nobody in my family either you know what i'm saying but it's here well forget george floyd gave it to us man the saint you know yeah man listen man i i like what i somebody said hey man we have the 